and my life has been strained. But in spite of everything I've been through, I still gotta say thank you. I was led to uh, teach today on uh, by the Holy Ghost. Um, ways and not to give place to the devil. You know, we think we have gone in every direction we can go, and we think that whatever we're doing, you know, how many of you know the Bible said, way that seem right to a man is destruction, really death. Amen? But we can give ways to the devil by doing by seven different things, the mind, the eyes, <coughs> our mouth, and our ears, certain things that we shouldn't say out our mouth certain things that we shouldn't have to entertain with our ears there's certain things that we shouldn't even do with our feet go places we should not go so all these things is being taught to we children of god when we was in the world we didn't know any better we did things like everybody else did like people doing today we did the same thing am i right but now that we children of god god has given us instruction ways not to give the devil place you know we give the devil place in so many areas with our mind how we think with our mouth the things we say that we shouldn't say Things that we see through our ear gate, okay? Hand, feet, all these things are giving the devil place. So today we're going to learn how not to give him place in these areas. Say amen. amen. <coughs> the first one we want to go into is about the mind. Um, how many of you know the mind? When, you, when your mind gets to wondering and all kind of stuff come in, how many of you know God said, I bring peace to your mind? He wants our minds to be kept at peace. He said, Those that keep their minds still in here keep us in perfect peace. Those who trust in him. How many of you know we trust God? He'll keep your mind in perfect peace. Even though the enemy may try to frazzle you, try to bring things on you. But God said, I'm going to keep you in peace. And ain't nothing like having peace today. How many of you just need more peace? <laughs> I can throw both my hands and my feet. if, Because uh, there's always something the enemy trying to do to attack us, to bring us not have that peace. And that's why God said, stay in my word. Like this morning, I got up and... I was just thanking God for just being here because you, you heard about what happened down there in Texas and you're here in Boston. And I'm just saying, God, I don't care what's going on. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful that we have a roof over our head. I'm grateful that we're still in one part. So many people, the house was blown away down in that fire. And then so many people went and they lost limbs. And, you know, you better throw your, let's give God a praise. Because what's going on today, thank God he's protecting us. Okay, we're going to go with the mind. Okay, utter, a fool utter all his mind. Let's turn to Proverbs. Okay, let's turn to Ephesians first, Ephesians 4. And we're going to go from there. Ephesians 4, we're speaking about things that you don't give the devil place to. Remember, this is all this is teaching is about giving the devil no place. Sometimes we say the wrong things. We look at the things and... You know, I, these gates, these are different gates that we give the devil place at. And we got to be very, very on top of all this stuff. Amen? Got to be on top of it because if you don't, you find yourself falling right into all those snares like the world. You'll be right back into your old self again. And who don't, I don't want my old self no more. Okay? I mean, say amen. A lot of stuff I used to do and say and how I looked at people and how I thought about things. I don't want that no more in my life. We're a new creature. Old things pass away, and all things become new. You're not the same person that you were before you, now you say the corruption that you had of the mind is incorruptible now. They said, let the renewing of the mind, that's what Romans 12 says, we've got to renew our mind daily, amen? Let's look at verse 27, I'm going to go up there a little bit, and these are some things that I want to go with, um, let's go to verse 22, be that he put off all concern the former conversation of old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 23. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holding. We take off, we put on. It's just like you take off old garments. You say, I can't wear this no more. I don't got too big and you know, whatever, too small, or you know how it go. So it's something old, you say, well, I want me a new dress, I want me a new suit, I want me a new outfit. So you take the old and you maybe give it away. If it's too bad, you don't want to give it to nobody. But then you want to put on something new and then you feel good. How many you know when you put something new and you feel good about yourself? Amen. That's how God wants to put on the newness of him. When you take off that old stuff and start walking in the newness and the righteousness and the holiness of God, then you feel good about yourself. I mean, you know, you feel better about yourself than you did before. Because you don't took off that old spirit stuff, that old man, the old barber. That old barber is still some old barber still in me. 
Come on, we, we have not arrived. But I'm trying to unclose and get rid of that old barber so some new stuff can come in, amen? So it says in verse 22, and be renewed in the spirit, in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man, verse 24, Ephesians 4, I'm reading of those that's come in. And put on, that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's what he wants to put on. Old go, new come in. Therefore, putting away lying, speaking every man's truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We got to speak truth to one another. Things I used to say and do, maybe, you know, gossiping and talking and all that. And, and I never liked that spirit, but it, it still gets in you sometimes. Come on now, no one is exempt from it. And so that old stuff, you don't do that no more. If you can't speak nice to about one another and say good things, don't say nothing. Just keep your mouth shut. So you don't know how you're hurting that person. I know it's good teaching. I get two amens. Okay. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, putting away, verse 25, therefore, putting away line, speaking every one truth with his neighbor. For we are members, we are all members of one another. And be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, and neither give place to the devil. We are children of God. Don't give the devil no place. So as a man, thank you, so is he. If you start thinking something, you're going to start doing something. Come on now, you know how many times you thought of something and you wanted, it wasn't always good th thoughts. I ain't always had good thoughts. I still don't have always good thoughts. I ain't going to say that like all my thoughts are good. The devil, the devil's a liar. We all got something that we think wrong. But then you say, no, 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 that's the old me. I can't, I can't go there. I got to go up into this verse. It says, oh, okay, where's it saying? Verse 25. We are all members of one another. I got to think about that. I'm a member of you. You remember me. I got to do to you as I want you to do to me. The Bible also say, do unto others as you have them do to you. If you don't want nobody to mistreat you, then you shouldn't mistreat nobody. Amen. If you don't want nobody talking about you, because you're going to reap what you sow. Before you put your mouth on somebody, just think about it. Just think. If I put my mouth on you, somebody's going to put their mouth back on me. I'm going to reap what I sow. So you got to be careful what you put out. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you, Esther, for the amen. amen. Okay, Proverbs. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Amen. We're doing good. Amen. All right, okay. Amen. That's good anyway. All right, let's go on. We're talking about the mind now. We're giving praise to the mind. So as a man thank you, so is he. You keep thinking it's the wrong thing, wrong stuff, the wrong thoughts, wrong, wrong actions come from wrong thoughts. You, if you think something, it was in, some people premeditate how to do things to get at somebody. How to murder, how to do, they still haven't plot that stuff. Look at this man killed all those people, had been plotting for five years. But he, just, he could never get over it, and then he wound out there killing all those people. And that had been in his heart for all those years. Yeah, the, that cop that was out there killing all them police, he, he had been fired for five years. And he had that thing in all those years. You'd be surprised how people hold stuff against you. And it should not be in the body of Christ. We're talking about children of God. Amen. Let the old go and let the new come in. Look at somebody say, old got to go and new coming in. Amen. I'm going to go down a little bit further from verse uh, 27. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hand. The things which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. People, you, we're not children of the world. We don't steal. If a man don't work, the Bible say. You don't eat. <laughs> That's what it says. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edify, they may minister grace unto the hear. You want things you say to be pleasing to people, they, they want to hear you. You don't want to be around people that gossip and talk about people all the time. Because see, that message is all in their mind to talk about people. Amen? And greet, I'm going to go ahead on. Oh, let me go ahead. Okay. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs 29. Yep, yep, yep. Hallelujah. Barbara, God help me too. Yeah, help Barbara. Say, say, Lord, help your name. Call your name. <laughs> that we can have a mind of Christ. <laughs> the old go and new come in. You got to take off that old thoughts and old things. And Oh, I thought so. Your thoughts ain't God's thoughts. You, you sitting there thinking about that, and God ain't even in that mess, you know? You should think of whatever pure. Philippians say whatever pure, whatever true. Well, we'll get to that because I'm going ahead of myself. But these are the things God wants us to think of. And all that other stuff is not God's. Just say, it's not God. And I would not let it come out of my mouth. Hey, right. Be careful how you treat people. You got Because the one you mistreat may be the one that bring you a glass of water. I said, be careful how you treat people. 
Because the very one you mistreat may be the one have to come and clean, wash you down, give you a ba- You don't know what. Uh, God said he'll bring your enemies to your footstool. The one you mistreat may be the one you got to help. Keep your mouth off of people. If they ain't did you no know, harm, huh? you done probably heard of them. Well, okay, verse 11, Proverbs 29. A fool utter all his mind, but a wise man keep it in till afterwards. A wise man is not going to go blabbing out everything before his time. Okay, you got to be careful who you tell your business to anyway. If you're getting ready to do something, you want to buy a house, a car, you can't go around telling all everything. If you're getting ready to start a business or anything, sometimes you just got to just you and God, and maybe God will show you somebody that you can talk to and pray about it, but you got to keep your mind. A fool just talk about everything. Sometimes I hear people talk so much, I'll be like, Lord, I don't want them to know my business. Because if they put me on the roaster today, if they put somebody on the roaster today, tomorrow they're going to barbecue me. A fool will utter all his mind, but a wise man will wait until after that thing happened. Right. Then they'll be like, oh, I didn't know you was going to buy a house. No, I just gave it to God. Let it be. Right. See, you're wise when you do that. Y'all better say amen. Yeah. Instead of just telling everything, you wait till it happened and then tell what it's about. Amen? Oh, y'all can say what you want about a fool. You, ain't nobody no fool in here, right? Y'all ain't letting everybody know all your business, right? All right, amen, amen. So we wise men. We don't utter out everything. Say amen. Because when you're wise, you're going to be able to hold that thing until after it happened. And once it happened, then there's the evidence there. How long you been waiting to get this here? Like a girl said, oh, I was getting married to him. And I went and told all these people, he didn't finna have a wedding. Ain't no wedding. Because you were so foolish, instead of waiting on God to be sure it was God, you just took on your own. See, that's the way the world is. The world does things like that. But we children of God do not go out telling nothing until it happened. Hey, hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Let's move on. First Corinthians, we're going back in the New Testament. Now, probably in the old, let's go to Isaiah 26, verse 3. I may have to finish this up next week. you be happy with that? Because it's a lot we need to know how to guard our, our mouth, <laughs> our mind, our ears. We need to know that. Amen? Because I'm t- Isaiah 26. And most of you know this verse. Amen? I'm sure we Bible scholars, everybody here, I mean, very Bible scholar. Some of you know the word better than I do. Verse 26 reads like this. Thy will keep him in perfect peace. Who mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. God will keep you and I in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him because we trust in God. I said we trust in God. Amen. When you trust in God, you can keep your mind on him because you know whatever you're going through, he's going to bring it to pass. When I believe in God for something, I don't have to hit, talk to 1,500 people to get okay. I get their opinion. I'm trusting God, so I keep my mind what he said he's going to do for me. All his promises are unto me. I'm believing him. I believe what God's going to do for me, going to do it. See, the devil can't hurt me, can't hurt my kids, can't hurt nothing like that belongs to me. Because see, once I pray, I leave it in his hand, and I go on about my business, keep doing what he has me to do, trusting him that he's going to bring it to pass. And anything that's going shaky in my family, in my ministry, God working it out for my good. See, one thing I know, I'm serving God. And when I pray and I ask God for something, he hears and answers my prayer. Now, I know that for a fact. I don't have to guess it. I don't have to talk about it. I just go ahead on. I throw my hands up and say, it's already done. It may not go the way it seems like it should go this today, but I guarantee you before it's all over, it's going the way God will have it to be, and it's going to be better. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. Keep your mind on Jesus. He keep you in perfect peace. Because you keeping your mind stayed on him. Amen. Second Corinthians 10. Oh, I feel good today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel good. I told the devil, you bought with the wrong one now. Hmm. And anybody bought with any of my church family, my immediate family, he got a fight on his hands. I pray like crazy. I do. I, I, I don't have no problem going to God for everything. See, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7. It said, cast all your cares on him because he cared for us. He cared for every one of us. And then verse, the next verse, verse 8, he said, because your adversary, the devil, roared around seeking who he can devour. So you, he's trying to get you and I, and you don't even know how he's trying to plot and scheme to bring something against you. Easy come, easy go. If you're on a road and everything just flying so smooth, you better be careful. If the devil ain't on your trail, then you say, I better back up and see, is this God's will for me? Because when you get to doing something for God, 
and want, and want to serve him, and you're trying to make it better for yourself, Satan's going to try his everything in his power to break you down. Okay. The verse 8 says, your adversary, the devil, running around seeking who he can get. He's always running around. He got people working for him, like God. We workers of God. We ambassadors of Jesus. How many of you know you're born again, you're working for the Lord? Put your hands up and say amen. amen. Now, when you start working for God and ain't, ain't working for the devil no more, he gets mad. Yeah. He puts you on his hit list. He starts saying, go after, he sends his little workers out there. Go get, uh, go get Ever Shannon. Go get uh, 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 Deaconess Bevel. Go, go. He sent them out. And he's only bother you where you're weak at. Come on now. But where you're weak at is where God want to build you up at. See, he can't, oh, I'm going to preach here today. He can't tack you where you're strong. But what the house he lived in where you was weak at, that's where he's sitting his record. Go back and get her because she's a warrior. She worries about everything. And then he starts, oh. yeah, I'm trying to live right, God. Why, why? I can't get, because he's coming back to attack where you was weak at because that's the house he once lived in. He don't bother you in everything. He only bothers you where he used to live. And he, if you give him place, now I'm talking about things, seven things, you don't give the devil place. He come back, if it ain't with your mouth, it be with your mind. If he gets you to listen to everything, see, he's easing in. Trying to get you back in. Trying to get back in there where he lived. Oh, let me go here. Amen. I got some, I don't know how many of y'all receiving. Look at chapter 10. 2 Corinthians 10. Don't, don't give up. Just stay with it. Just stay with it. I don't care what you're going through. Just stay with it. And just go on and fight a good fight and keep the faith. You'll never make it to the finish line if you don't stay in the race. Amen. You're in a race now. And you're going to win. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to win. Because I ain't about to stop. A winner never quit and a quitter never w- Come on. I say a winner. You're going to be a winner. You're going to have to stay with the race. And run it with all you got. And don't look back at no devil. Let the devil know you ain't stopping me. Amen. You can have everything anybody's have, but you got to go out. The faith and work works together. Yes, Chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians. For we walk in the, for we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, verse 3, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down a stronghold. That means putting down anything that, let me go here. Casting out in imagination and everything that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into account to every thought until the obedience of Christ. Every thought, everything you think about, bring it back into God. God says, I'm a conqueror. God says, He loves me. God says, I can do it. God says, He's with me. If God be with me, I'm going to make it. All the time I used to talk to God. God, they're looking for me to fall. I got people sitting around saying, ain't going to never be nothing. You'll never have a building. God, please don't let me fall. Don't let me be brought to shame. And I stayed with his word, what he promised me. And I kept giving him back. God said, bring back to his memories what he told you. Whatever he told you, just keep saying, God, you promised me that nothing would go undone. Not, nothing I put my hands to, I will prosper in it. My kids going to prosper. Everything I do, I would talk to him. And they had tears in my face because I saw people whispering, talking about me. But I still stayed with it. I'm telling you something now. Some of you are getting ready to go places. Some of you are getting ready to go in high heights. God getting ready to plan. God got a plan for your life. For I know the thoughts that I think of you, he says. They're good and not even for an expected end. You ain't seen nothing to what God getting ready to do for you all. Give God another praise here. If you're in a warfare right now, pull, bring your mind back to the thoughts of God, what he promised you. Don't sit there and think all that crazy stuff. Oh, he said to me, oh, you're getting old, and how are you going to do all this now when you're old? I say, this is the timing of God. It wasn't his time for me to do it years ago. It's his timing now. So whatever he got for me now, I'm going to get it. And the devil in hell, I told him, you're not going to stop me. Oh, you're 72. You should be sitting back relaxing, and going to take a trip. I said, you go take the trips. I'm here to do work for God. See, he's going to play with your mind. Oh, y'all ain't getting me. He's going to talk to your mind because he's talking to me about my age. Now, what the hell I got to do with my age when I'm in physical fit to do the work for God? You're more than a conqueror. Look at somebody and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Through all these things, everything I'm going through, I'm better than this. You are better than what you're looking at yourself to be. Don't put yourself down. Hold your head up. You are somebody. The devil trying to tell you this and that. And then you fall into it. That's where you're going to be. Right where you at. Woo! Turn to Romans 8. I I don't know about y'all, but I I feel good. Because somebody's going to get delivered here today. Somebody's going to go on out there and do what they're supposed to do. 
The devil done told somebody you'll never make it. You just get your butt back in school. Do what you want to do. Whatever it is, do it. Don't let no devil stop you. And if it's your time and you done did the best you can do, God got another plan. Say, Lord, show me what you have me to do today. For such a time he got your life for something. Not to look cute. Okay, Roman 8. <laughs> Verse 5. Y'all, yeah, anybody get anything out of this? Yes. Verse 5 reads from chapter 8 of Romans. For they that after the flesh do mind the things, do mind the things of the flesh. Your mind on flesh the things. They mind the things of the flesh because that's, that's where we were at one time. Those that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. You're thinking of spiritual things. Your mind shouldn't be on fleshly stuff, the old stuff. You should have your mind set on affection of things above, not this here. Let me go ahead. For the carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind, it is life and peace. <laughs> Get it in your spirit. Now, if you got another Bible, Amplify may break it down, which it does. They're different. That's why you need to study these things so you get it in your spirit. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You with your mind on the thing, oh, when I'm going to be married, when I'm going to get a husband, when I'm going to have, forget that stuff. God got his plans for you for who he has for you. He has a plans for you about everything you want. Get your mind on God. Think about God, I'm here for such a time as this. What would you have me to do? I want to be in your divine and perfect will. Don't let me be thinking on all this fleshy stuff. Because God said, if you seek him, his kingdom, his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. He's going to give you everything you have. And nobody's going to stop it anyway. So get your mind on being doing something productive. They're going to have for his kingdom and for his glory. Verse 7 says, Because the cardinal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subject to the Lord God, neither indeed can it be. You can't do nothing with a cardinal mind. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh. God turn around and, and, and Paul wrote, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in him. Once the spirit of God comes here, it changes you. You may walk up and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. His spirit come in. He starts changing you. Those out there that never accepted Christ, they're none of his. They don't even understand. I didn't understand. You didn't understand why you were doing some crazy stuff. Because you didn't have the spirit of Christ in you. Now, we all done did some stupid, crazy stuff. Some stuff you don't even want nobody to know you did. Come on now. I'll show you. I ain't letting you know it all my business. <laughs> I've been forgiven. I've been, it went to the cross. God nailed it to the cross. So why should I tell you about it? Oh, she did. Okay, let's move on. Amen. Before somebody asked me what I did. Okay. <laughs> now, verse 10. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit... Of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. God's spirit is in us. Look at us. I'm so glad he in me. And he's in me. I'm in him and he in me. Come on now, we're together. You're twined together. You ain't got to worry about the world and the flesh, all that stuff. Amen? Okay. It's a, um, that raise of Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brother, we are dead not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh... My page toe here. If you live after the flesh, what it says here, my page toe. He shall die, but if he do the spirit of, to modify the deeds of the body, he shall live. You gotta let go. As many as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For if he are not, if if he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, for we for he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but he have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit is there bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Your spirit bear witness to you that you're a child of God. You know. You know you've been changed. Ain't nobody got to tell you. You know you done changed. You may have an arrived to everywhere you should be, but you know there's a change. And the only way you can be changed is because the Spirit of God lives inside of you. The Spirit, I know I'm changed. I know God lives in me. I ain't gonna have to have nobody tell me. I don't have to be up here behind this pulpit to know that I've been changed. Let's move on. I could go on and on. Okay, it's just so much here. Whoo! Mm. Let's look at Philippians 2. I just can feel like I don't feel like rushing nothing here today. I want to take my time that you get it all in you. Take notes. You should bring a pad and a pen and not just flip the page, but write them down. When you're home, read them. Take time to read 
and get to know God even better for yourself. Amen? That's why he brought us here, so that we get to know him better. Amen? Okay. Let's look at verse, uh, ooh, chapter 2, if me, okay, I'm going to start at the first. If there, if there be therefore any consolation, I have any comfort of, if any fellowship of the Spirit, of, if any bowels in mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, and having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. We should be of one accord together. We hear the word, we know what God done said, our minds should be together. God bless you, and thank you for tuning into this week's broadcast. What an awesome word from the woman of God. I know that word was meant for you, just as that word was meant for me. I know things may seem a little rough in your life right now, and it may seem like there's no way out, but I'm here to tell you today that there is a way, and that way is Jesus. So if today's word really moved you, and God is tugging at your heart, I ask that you repeat this simple prayer with me. Say, Father... Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart and live in me and help me to live for you. Father God, I believe that your son Jesus, he died and you rose him from the dead. Father God, I accept, make it personal, I accept your son Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior to serve him all the days of my life. And if you said that simple prayer, Jesus Christ is a spirit and he's coming to your heart and your life will begin to change. It may not be immediately and it may not be overnight, but your life will begin to change. And if you or someone that you may know is in need of prayer, the number is on the screen. And if you're ever in our area, we invite you to come and fellowship with us. And if you really enjoyed this broadcast, and you would love to see it continue, we ask that you give a small donation. Just remember, a little goes a long way, and you are definitely sowing on good ground. So as always, we thank you, we love you, God loves you, and be blessed. I would like for you to visit us for one of our services every Sunday, 8.30 and 11.30 a.m., Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m., and our Midday Fresh Word every Thursday at 12 noon under our very own Bishop Barbara Clanton. We look forward to seeing you. To God be the glory.